This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for April 28, 2023. And in the news this afternoon, Turks and the Kikos pilot charged in connection with a drug bust at Norman Manley International Airport. The pilot from the Turks and Caicos Islands, who was arrested following a drug bust at the Norman Manley International Airport on Sunday, has been charged. 35-year-old Mr. Kenedo Vandal Thomas, a British citizen of the Turks and the Caicos Islands, was arrested by the airport police after he was reportedly held in possession of 17 pounds of ganja. He is scheduled to appear before the St. Andrew Parish Court today. According to the police on Sunday, Mr. Thomas, who was about to pilot a flight destined to the Turks and the Caicos Islands, checked on a blue Pullman suitcase. The suitcase was x-rayed at the baggage makeup area at the airport and anomalies detected. Mr. Thomas was alerted and the suitcase searched by the police in his presence and found it to contain 17 and a half pounds of ganja. Mr. Thomas was subsequently arrested. He is being represented by King's Council Peter Champigny. Nurse killed along Sandy Bay Main Road in Clarendon. A practical nurse was on Wednesday shot along the Sandy Bay Main Road in Clarendon. 25-year-old Avigay Ellis later died in hospital. It is reported that about 1.45, Miss Ellis was on her way home when a black Honda Stream motor car drove up behind her. A man exited the vehicle with a firearm and opened fire hitting her all over her body. The news was informed that Miss Ellis's family was advised to leave the community after her brother was charged in connection with a murder that occurred in Rasta Corner, Sandy Bay. Wednesday was the anniversary of the murder. Bail extended for women charged with a multi-million dollar surgical fraud. The four women charged in connection with a multi-million dollar fraud uncovered at the Sajikor Bank last year are to return to the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on September 21. Their bail was extended on Thursday morning when they appeared in court. Alyssa Moulton White, a former vice president of group marketing at the Sajikor Group Jamaica, client care officer Tishan Samuels, and the former Sajikor Bank employees Tricia Monique Moulton and Malika McLeod are accused of conspiring and defrauding the U.S. foreign currency accounts of about six Sajikor customers. During Thursday's proceedings, Mrs. Moulton White's attorney, Matthew Hyatt, reiterated his request for a video footage that was captured on September 21 and 30, 2022. Mr. Hyatt made a similar request in February. The court was told that the video footage for one of the dates is available. Ms. Moulton White is also represented by Bianca Samuels. Meanwhile, the forensic audit is still outstanding. Attorney representing Ms. Samuels, Rita Allen Brown, requested video footage and the unique transaction reference report for all transactions for September 8, 2022. Ms. Tricia Moulton is represented by Orville Morgan, while Ms. McLeod is being represented by Peter Champagne KC. Investigators say more than $60 million was defrauded from customers' accounts in the alleged scam. One account was reportedly defrauded of $40 million. Policeman ordered to stand a trial for the death of his 18-month-old child. Detective Sergeant Sheldon Dobson, who was charged with manslaughter following the tragic death of his 18-month-old daughter in January last year, was on Thursday ordered to stand a trial for the death of the child. During Thursday's committal hearing before the St. Elizabeth Parish Court, a judge ruled that the prosecutors had established a prima facie against the Sergeant Dobson. He is scheduled to face a trial before the St. Elizabeth Circuit Court. The policeman who was taken back into custody was later released on bail in the sum of $200,000 to appear in court on July 27. His previous bail bond was $750,000. The policeman was charged in August last year following a ruling by the Director of Public Prosecutions. Prosecutors reported that a Sergeant Dobson's daughter died after she was left locked inside his vehicle for eight hours at the Black River Police Station on January 19 last year. The policeman who was expected to drop off his daughter at a daycare reportedly forgot that she was inside the vehicle when he went to work. 
It is reported that he went on an assignment and later realized that he left the 18-month-old child in the vehicle. Jackson suffered excruciating and a slow death. Arguing that 20-year-old accountant Kenneth Jackson suffered an excruciating and a slow death by strangulation, even while clawing at her killer's shoulders to hold on to her life, the prosecution on Thursday said her killer, 52-year-old mechanic Robert Fowler, should be sentenced to nothing less than life behind bars. A senior prosecutor during the sentencing hearing for Fowler before Justice Leighton Pusey in the Home Circuit Division of the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston said while Fowler, who pleaded guilty on March 8 this year, is eligible for a sentence discount based on the law, there was a precedent for that discount to be further reduced or denied owing to the activity of the offense or the strength of the case against the offender. Further, the Crown commended the approach taken in a ruling of the appeal court in which the reduction of a discount was seen as imperative where protection of the public necessitates that a long sentence be imposed. As such, the prosecutor said the Crown was recommending that a faller be sentenced to life imprisonment with eligibility for parole after he has spent between 20 and 25 years in prison. The deceased suffered an excruciating and a slow death by strangulation and the wounds on the defendant's shoulders, the Crown is asking this court to find as a sign that she struggled to hold on to her life. The prosecutor continued in further urging the sentencing judge to regard Jackson's age and gender in comparison to her killers. The court must be mindful that we live in a society where we do have older men killing younger girls. The deceased was 20, while the defendant was 50 at the time of the incident. The defendant continued to aggravate the offense in an effort to conceal the body. He first hid the body in an abandoned building and then, perhaps like garbage, disposed of the body in a ditch, he said further. This, the Crown submits, was a grave offense. A young lady having a relationship of trust with the accused person who was strangled to death, no doubt slowly appreciated what was happening, that she was not going to live. He has given a caution statement where he has admitted his guilt. Items belonging to her was found at his home. The case was strong against him, the prosecutor said. In the meantime, the prosecutor who said the Crown had struggled to find murder cases with similar facts as Jackson's told the court that the closest it came was that of a fashion designer and a photo studio operator, 37-year-old Cornelius Robinson, who in 2015 pleaded guilty to the murder of 14-year-old schoolgirl Santoya Campbell, with whom he claimed to have had a relationship. Robinson was that same year sentenced to life with eligibility for parole after 25 years. Robinson, in a renewed appeal in 2022, lost his bid to have his sentence reduced and succeeded only in having the 21 days he had spent in custody awaiting trial deducted. We would commend this case for the court's consideration when it is deciding the sentence to be handed down, the senior prosecutor said, in noting that the appropriate objective when Fowler is being sentenced should be retribution and a deterrence in light of the nature of the offense, the list of aggravating factors, and the public interest. He, however, noted that the call for retribution was not to be seen as asking the court to be vengeful in sentencing. Justice Fuse stated emphatically that parole, when a life sentence is imposed, was not automatic and even if granted did not mean that a convicted individual would be a free person to walk up and down at will. Fowler's attorney Lyndon Willesley, in his plea in mitigation, said there were no words of consolation that could soothe the relatives of the dead woman. In pleading for justice, Pusey to temper justice with mercy, Willesley said his client had not wasted the court's time and had accepted responsibility for the crime. The attorney, in further urging the judge to give consideration to Fowler's rehabilitation, said he would not make any suggestion as to the sentence to be imposed on his client. Responding to the submissions of the Crown, Willesley said while he would not argue with a proposal for a life sentence, his client should be credited for time spent behind the bars and the fact that he was remorseful. According to the attorney, his client has been contrite, has accepted responsibility, and is sorry. He further suggested that the period to be served before eligibility for parole should be less than 20 years. Fowler is to be sentenced on May 4.
Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.